ChemGuard Hydrodynamic. Uh, it basically means that it's a fluid that moves. Which could be said about anything on the wall. Today, give a quick tour of the oil can collection. Of course, it goes beyond that. There's grease and antifreeze and even some other consumer products that aren't automotive. Pretty windy day out, so I'm not really in the mood to be out there. Hear the building creaking around a little bit. Sorry about that. Just Kansas, what do you say? This is probably 20 years of collecting. Got the bigger cans up top, some two gallon. Kind of some older ones there. Goodyear brake fluid, pretty obscure piece. Fluffo shortening, gallon of pancake and waffle syrup. That thing probably came from a, who knows, hotel or pancake house or something like that. Got your old Walmart cans. A lot of history there, just of the mega company that we know today where it had its roots. That athletic lotion can is actually full, unopened. Tennis balls. There's the telephone booth cleaner. Super obscure can. Mimeograph ink. Stuff that you can show some of these young kids and they won't have any idea what it is, but at least show them a little bit of the way life used to be. Prince Albert, let him out. Old jars, just kind of interesting. A little bit of a mishmash here. This model engine fuel can there. Max has really neat graphics. The old generic 40s car. Thought this military can was kind of funny. They tell you it's poison before they tell you <laughs> what's inside of it. It's like the loudest call out on that can. Of course, being in the military, you almost wonder if it was maybe intended for other purposes. Could have been, who knows, war's a tough thing. Car Joy, great graphics on that one. Various Pennzoil paper cans, Steel Texaco. Got kind of a additive section. Some of these may be more snake oil than others. ChemGuard Hydrodynamic. Uh, it basically means that it's a fluid that moves. Which could be said about anything on the wall. Just a mix of cork cans there. Some older, some later. Starting fluid, those are actually little pellets in there. Pretty dangerous. I'm not exactly sure how I'd use them. I never popped the tops on them because I didn't want to find out, but they're still 
NOS unused. Got a shelf of mobile there. Mobile branded quite a lot. The paints are pretty neat. Then little more of a mishmash here. This guard's all probably my favorite of all, just for the neat graphics there. Got the cable operated steam shovel. Permatex, marvel of graphic design. Some paints. I heard that the uh, little court there is what Wiley Coyote used to touch up some of his equipment. Never could get the Roadrunner though. Paints and thinners. Rust Oleum name, Fire Hydrant Red, pretty neat. Interesting fixed wing airplane graphic. A little race car. That's probably my second favorite. Just great graphic design advertising on that. Sinclair, always a hit. People like to be reminded that that oil used to be dinosaurs. You got the tire white. If your tires are too black, make them white. You got the one tire black. If they're too white, turn them back to black. I don't know. Cleaners, everything else. There's some bigger cans, some two gallon. It's kind of the agricultural section. It's like an NOS Massey decal kit. Still sealed in the can. Probably no good, but just interesting to look at. Then had a Pet Boys can sneak in here. Manny, Mo, and Jack. A lot of people don't know about their lesser known nephews and niece. Manny, Mo, and Jill. Couple John Deere there. Then whole shelf of international paint sand freeze. More antifreeze. Peak. Goodyear branded their own. This is actually probably about the most obscure piece in here. That's a Phillips 66 fill gas propane cheese box. Probably not worth a whole lot, but where else would you ever turn up a cardboard Phillips 66 cheese box? BF Goodrich, more additives and repairs. Little BF Goodrich section, another super obscure piece. That's what it looks like. Just neat old relics of a time that's now past. These little seal cans, super neat graphics with the little man. Radiator cleaner with ODB. Scientific formula. Or Prestone. 
there was a court, and then somehow all these Wanda cans have kind of found me. Those are out of Oklahoma City. The gallons are all full NOS unused. There's kind of a quick rundown of the other products that they sold. Got these little glass bottles. I'm not sure if they were maybe World War II era, someone was saying that they packed them in glass because there weren't that much access for steel cans, but who knows? They may just put it in glass to put it in glass. Some of the labels are kind of unstable on those, so I haven't displayed them yet till I find some way to attach them a little better. Archival quality, of course. Zero, zero X. Then got just a staggering amount of General Motors here. This is probably a fraction of what they branded in total it's like almost every swap meet i go to i still find <laughs> different ones that haven't seen before i mean it's just crazy the inventory list that they must have had to keep for this stuff some older ones some newer ones some in better shape, some not so great, but still showing the history of merchandising of the company. These little pellets here, I'm not sure. And a few more GM. I probably don't have anything really super rare in here, but I don't like to use the R word anyway. I think people toss it around too much, but that Cadillac one might be considered a little bit that way. At least obscure and scarce at the minimum. My favorite of the GM cans is the machine cleaner. You wonder what's machine cleaner? Well, on the back it tells you it goes in a machine apparently and it's used for car finishes. Ideal for used cars which have been abused. And for new car prep if they've been abused on the trip. Pretty neat can, that one's full. Oil bottle rack, I think all of those are different. These may have some value, but to me there's a bit of sentimental value to them just because I've collected all eight of those at different places and probably Six of them at least were old falling down barns that people just did auto repair out of. I think there's one like really clean one in the back that came from a swap meet. But other than that, a lot of those pretty much were found out in the wild on some of these trips that we've gone to pick up cars or old abandoned farms that were auctioned. And so... Those kind of have a little bit of sentimental significance to me just because I picked them out of the places where they actually had been used. Gallon Studebaker Fabric Cleaner. That one I suppose you could probably say is a rare can and probably, probably be justified to say that. Unfortunately, whatever was inside there was pretty corrosive. So it ate some holes in the can. I did pay $40 for that just because it was so unique. Like I was standing there at that swap meet and I was like, 
I'll never see this can again. Mopar branded some, not near as much as GM, or maybe I just haven't found them all. Ford branded theirs. These little tune-up kit cans are pretty cool. They had all your points, your odor, your cap, everything in those cans. Neat marketing strategy to package them up like that. Got some grease cans. Then you've got the old Isky lifter boxes and valve spring boxes. Some of those are pretty old and then some of them are fairly new just because companies like to kind of tap into that nostalgia in their marketing, which is kind of cool. Gas cans. Two of those to call out are the Datsun Saves and the AC Gasoline. Just kind of an interesting market strategy of taking a boring, undifferentiated product like gasoline and tying it back to your own car company's marketing. Pretty clever what they did. Then another interesting one to call out is this one. It's actually marked gas can pack. And the reason they call it that is because this was marketed actually by Prestone. And so they shipped antifreeze in here and you can see the residue from that label on both sides. They actually had a Prestone label pasted over and so you'd use the antifreeze out of the can and then when you were done you had a gas can probably I would say maybe 60s era just kind of fun to think about the history of a concept of how something like that came to be you know some old timer that worked at the company that grew up in the depression was like, hey, we should market a way for reusable, repurposed product packaging, which today obviously would never happen. I mean, you could imagine the legal department uh, wouldn't even let an idea like that get out of the <laughs> sketch pad. This can on the end got the generic 50s, 60s looking car on it. Kind of cool piece. And then up top, just kind of a mix. Sears Allstate. I've always thought Allstate cans were kind of neat because it just makes you think back to the old uh, Henry J that they rebadged as the Sears Allstate. That motor heater, super neat piece. Relic of back in the time before we had multi-weight oils. Got your 30 weight in there on a cold winter night and you can light your heater underneath to keep it from totally gelling out. Then some two gallon Wandas, a few NASCAR Tide boxes, and then one really old one. It's not super old, it's probably just 70s era. Pretty neat graphic art on those. It was a lot of fun collecting these cans. Many, many of them I found in the wild in the locations that they were last used. Some of them I did pick up at swap meets. It was really, really fun to get these put up and organize them. One more bonus piece I'll show just cause we're here and it was something I turned up while organizing. This is an old 23 cent gas sign 
Condition is terrible, but it's got just really unique history to it. It is hand painted and you can see that it was actually a commercial sign underneath there. You can see the little ring of the bottom of an oil can, which is Conoco. Story of this sign, when my dad bought the farm in 1980, he made a deal on the farm and bought it, and they basically didn't really clean it up. They just left all of the junk piles sitting around. And so I remember as a kid, probably seven, eight years old, I used to take my little red wagon and I would load it up with junk and parts and carry it from one pile to the other. I guess this stuff kind of gets in you pretty early and this sign was one of those pieces. So something that definitely has historical significance but also personal sentimental value even though it's really probably probably not even a $40 piece imagine people watching this probably ask hey would you sell this one would you sell that one and kind of a complicated answer yes but during these months, March and April, they're super, super busy. I don't get a chance to really stay caught up with anything. And so, honestly, at this point, the answer would be not right now because I just literally would not have the time to go box something and take it down to the post office. So I uh, hope, hope that's not too confusing of an answer. Yes, but really no. There's one more Ford five gallon automatic transmission fluid, late fifties era probably.